In the mid-1950s, the world was obsessed with the atom. It was the age of nuclear optimism, when people believed that the same power which destroyed cities could also light up the future. Everything was atomic. There were atomic toys, atomic cocktails, atomic refrigerators. The future was glowing, literally. And in that glow, the engineers at Ford asked a question that sounded like science fiction. What if a car could run on nuclear power? Not electricity, not gasoline, but a small nuclear reactor right there in your driveway. It was 1957 when Ford unveiled the concept that would become one of the most ambitious and most insane ideas in automotive history. They called it the Ford Nucleon, a car powered by uranium, a car that could, in theory, drive thousands of miles without ever refueling. The concept was simple, terrifyingly simple. Instead of an engine, the Nucleon would carry a miniature nuclear reactor at the rear. That reactor would heat a liquid, producing steam. The steam would then drive turbines, which in turn powered the car's wheels. No emissions, no oil, no gas, just atomic energy. Ford's designers imagined two power capsules, modular nuclear cores that could be swapped out at special refueling stations. In their vision of the future, instead of pulling up to a gas pump, you drive into a Ford service center, and technicians in radiation suits would slide out your used uranium cartridge and plug in a new one. And off you'd go, silent, clean, and radioactive. On paper, it was the perfect car. It didn't pollute. It didn't need refueling for years. It was the ultimate freedom machine. But here's the thing about perfect ideas. They rarely survive reality. To make Nucleon work, Ford needed something that didn't exist. A miniature reactor small enough to fit in a car, safe enough to survive a crash, and cheap enough to mass produce. That was impossible, even for the atomic age. The reactors of the time were the size of houses. They required tons of lead shielding to contain radiation. If one ever malfunctioned, it could contaminate an entire city. Imagine rear-ending someone on the highway and creating your own private Chernobyl. Even if Ford solved the safety issue, which they couldn't, there was the question of infrastructure. Where would people refuel? Who would dispose of the spent uranium cores? How do you ensure a car that could melt your neighborhood? Slowly, the fantasy started to unravel, and yet Ford still built it, at least a model of it, a beautiful three to eight scale prototype displayed proudly at auto shows. People loved it. The press called it the car of tomorrow. It was sleek, silver, and aerodynamic, shaped like a jet with a glass canopy and futuristic fins. It looked like something out of the Jetsons before the Jetsons even existed. But behind the applause, there was unease. The more people thought about it, the more absurd it sounded. And as the 1960s approached, the world's love affair with the atom began to fade. Nuclear accidents, radioactive leaks, and growing fear of fallout turned the once bright dream of atomic energy into a nightmare. The Ford Nucleon quietly disappeared. Its model was tucked away in a museum, and Ford never mentioned it again. It never had an engine. It never moved an inch under its own power, but it left a legacy, a reminder of just how bold and how naive the mid-century imagination could be. Because Nucleon wasn't just about technology, it was about belief. It was about a time when engineers thought science could fix anything, when impossible was just another word for not yet. The same spirit that built the atomic bomb also built the dreams that followed it. Dreams of flying cars, self-cleaning houses, and highways that reach the moon. Today, as we talk about electric vehicles, battery range, and solar charging, the Nucleon feels like an artifact from a parallel timeline, one where humanity kept pushing the nuclear dream instead of letting it go. In that world, maybe you'd drive to work in your glowing blue Ford, passing by others, leaving faint trails of radiation behind them, a civilization powered by atoms instead of lithium. Would it have worked? Probably not. But that's not the point. The Ford Nucleon was never built to drive. It was built to imagine. It was a symbol of unfiltered ambition, of a time when companies dared to dream without thinking of consequences. 
And maybe that's why it still fascinates us. Because every generation has its nucleon, a symbol of our greatest hopes and our blindest optimism. The Ford Nucleon reminds us of one simple truth. Humanity's future is always driven by the same fuel, imagination.